गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स वेलकम वंस अगेन इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर देर वॉज वन स्मॉल मिस्टेक वाइल एक्सप्लेनिंग द क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ ए बीम आई हैड सेट दैट पार्ट ऑफ द सेक्शन विच इज बिलो द न्यूट्रल एक्सेस इज इन कंप्रेशन एक्चुअली इट इज इन टेंशन साइड सो यू जस्ट कंसिडर दिस एज एक्जैक्टली अपोजिट सॉरी फॉर द मिस्टेक वील कंटिन्यू विद द from the previous uh, session now uh, here based on previous lecture i have summarized some of the points and we have to do some assumptions also before going to the further theory part so as per the previous session we have very first definition which is of plastic hinge what is plastic hinge we had seen in stage the stress distribution diagram of beam rectangular cross section so in that last part was or the last stress distribution diagram was something like this where complete cross section of the beam will develop yield stress value so when this part or this stage appears there is plastic hinge so in words we can define plastic hinge as a section at which all fibers have yielded and hence for further any load rotation takes place at the section without resisting any additional movement it means the capacity of the section uh, beyond this is zero okay after this uh, stage has arrived for, for any cross section there is no additional moment it can raises next is plastic moment capacity so plastic moment capacity is it is defined as the moment at which uh, or it is the moment which makes all the fibers at the section to yield and thereby form a plastic hinge okay so based on the previous session these are two outcomes now assumptions for uh, going ahead in case of any theory we need assumptions like in stresses in beams or in strength of materials we have seen number of assumptions many of the assumptions here all uh, are also common one of the common assumption is second assumption plane section before bending remains plane after bending that is the outcome or the meaning of this assumption is shear deformation is negligible then what else is there there is one additional new assumption stress strain relationship is idealized to straight lines to two straight lines which are those two straight lines in first session we have seen a normal stress strain behavior of the mild steel now that mild steel behavior is idealized as two straight lines so up to yielding point that is point c this is one straight line and whatever is the behavior of the material beyond point c that is beyond lower yield point it is assumed as horizontal straight line so these are two straight lines so instead of behavior something like this we have idealized this stress strain behavior as two straight lines this is what our first assumption is second is common third relationship between compressive stresses and compressive strains is same as between tensile stress and tensile strain what is the meaning <coughs> if you see here at a depth small d below the neutral axis whatever is the stress and strain developed at this level same relationship will be there at a depth d above the neutral axis it means area of the section below the neutral axis and above the neutral axis will be same but it is applicable only for symmetric cross sections next in case of fully plastic moment 
plastic hinge forms like this and it undergoes rotation yes but bending moment remains constant bending moment remains constant then effect of axial load and stress is neglected so this is common assumption from some theory and deflections are small this is again a common assumption so these are assumptions and these two definitions now in the next part we shall see the shape factor concept thank you good afternoon friends and welcome now we shall see the concept of shape factor which is very important in plastic analysis okay shape factor is nothing but one ratio of two moments so we will go to last semester's theory of bending stresses we have this famous equation f by y f or sigma okay is equal to m upon i is equal to e upon r so from this we can get m is equal to f into i upon one m is equal to f into i upon y so i upon y is nothing but z i upon y is nothing but z which is section modulus now this is since this is from strength of materials theory this is elastic so whatever the moment we are getting is elastic and this section modulus is also elastic okay now similar to this we can write plastic moment capacity as f into z so shape factor s is defined as mp upon me which is to be found as zp upon ze because if we substitute mp as f times zp and m is equal to f times ze f gets cancelled so this is nothing but a ratio of plastic section modulus to elastic section modulus so now we will try to find out shape factor for different cross sections which are standard results okay so we'll start with the simplest of the shape factors which is rectangular cross section so here is one rectangular cross section whose width we shall assume as small b and overall depth we shall assume as capital b okay so b by d is the cross section and we have to find out shape factor for rectangular cross section so we have to find these two values so one of them is ze which is simple we can find out from the theory of strength of materials elastic analysis so ze is equal to s i upon y okay ze is equal to i upon y now what is y y is distance of extreme fiber stress from the neutral axis now where is the neutral axis for rectangular cross section it is exactly as at half the depth of the b so our y value is d by 2 okay what will be i moment of inertia of a rectangular cross section bd cube by 12 so we shall substitute both these values in this ratio okay so i is equal to b into capital d cube upon 12 this is i value divided by 
y y is distance of extreme fiber stress from neutral axis so which is d by 2 so what will be this ratio z e is equal to b into this 1 power of d gets reduced so d square okay into this 2 becomes in the numerator 12 is as it is in the denominator so this is vd square upon 6 this is simple zp now zp zp is plastic section modulus okay plastic section modulus means now what is z z is i upon y or stress into area stress into area so as per the assumptions in plastic analysis since the section is cross section is symmetric we have equal area below the plastic neutral axis as well as above the plastic neutral axis neutral axis coincides with plastic neutral axis because cross section is symmetric so area above the neutral axis plastic neutral axis is equal to area below the plastic neutral axis so we shall call these areas as compression area and tension area so area in compression into ic plus area in tension into yt okay both are equal so we can write this as two times ac into ic because both areas are equal so this is equal to two times now how much is the area in compression zone you take any area now so area in compression zone is b into depth d by 2 so this is ac multiplied by yc so 2 times ac into yc so this is yc yc value is nothing but distance of centroidal distance of compression zone from neutral axis so where is the centroid of compression zone compression zone is now either we can consider any area above the neutral axis or new below the neutral axis because both are equal areas so these are the two points to find out any of the distance of these points from neutral axis so this is this is rectangle of d by 2 so center of a rectangle is at half of the depth depth is d by 2 for area in compression so this centroidal uh, centroidal point is located at a distance of half of d by 2 which is nothing but d by 4 so yc is d by 4 okay not like this d by 2 okay so here actually it is this distance okay so any of the distance will be same so yc is d by 4 hence we are getting zp as bd square by 4 so substitute now zp and ze in this safe factor ratio we will get this value as 6 by 4 so 6 by 4 is 1.5 okay so safe factor for a rectangular cross section is 1.5 which is constant thank you